One of the most common and frustrating problems people have with carbureted engines is an off-idle stumble or bog. And there's a lot of things that will give it to you. But more often than not, it can be traced directly to the car's accelerator pump or the carburetor's accelerator pump. But before you go there, you've got to cover the checklist. You know, see, we do like our, our, our Wednesday night, Sunday night lives, and people are always asking questions about stumble, hesitation, bog, and our car doesn't hit right. So let's try to answer all of those in one video here, right? The very first thing you need to do is know that everything is healthy. So in other words, like all of the cylinders have reasonable compression. The cam is okay, right? It's not too big, it's not retarded, it's, you know, you have to make sure all of the basics are in place. Ignition timing is a big one. You gotta make sure that the timing is where it's supposed to be, initial timing. Um, advanced weights, you don't really have to worry so much about like sticking advanced weights when it comes to initial acceleration because that happens before the advanced weights actually come into play. So, but your initial timing's gotta be right on. But assuming all of those other factors are, are in order, then we gotta look at the car's accelerator pump. Carburetor's accelerator pump. I'll get it right eventually. So, first things first. Is it a healthy pump shot? Easy enough to find out. Look down the balls of the primary, the, the throat of the primary, open the throttle. You see two streams of gasoline squirting at each barrel, right? Or if you're dealing with a single barrel carburetor, obviously, you know, one. But for something like this, two streams, right? Are you seeing that? You have to use your imagination. I don't have a carburetor that's full of gasoline at the moment to show you. Assuming you've got a good pump shot, then the next thing you have to say is, is it timed correctly? Is it sufficient? So... There are only two basic accelerator pump systems that you're gonna come across on just about everything, right? Uh, one is the Carter AFB, AVS, and an Edelbrock style, which I'll show you in a second, and the other is the Holly and Summit style. So, come over here. Easy to show you the whole setup on, on this carburetor. So, here's your linkage arm, okay? And then here's your pivot. And then back here is the actual accelerator pump and this little S-link that holds it all together. So you see, as soon as you open the throttle, this pivots. Okay, now, there are three holes on this arm. Right here, one, two, and three. So, the furthest away from the carb body is your softest shot. Uh, what this does is it lifts the plunger the least amount and it's the slowest action when the throttle is opened. The one in the center is the one in the center. The one closest to the carb body is your hottest or your, 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 your hardest shot. So when the linkage arm is in this hole, it's lifted up the most and the reaction is the quickest when you open the throttle. So essentially, if... You hit the gas, you know, you roll into the gas, and it coughs or stumbles. You want to move it to a closer hole. By the same token, you hit the gas, and it doesn't stumble, but it kind of feels flat. Whoa, right? Then, if you're getting too much pump shot, you want to move it further back. And generally speaking, this center hole is where you're going to find your happiest zone. Almost all typical street strip cars. Now we're talking about race car, we're not talking about tunnel rams, and we're talking about just your typical street strip car. The middle hole is generally the happiest. But again, you've got to play with it. And again, it's simple. You don't need any special tools, no special equipment, nothing. Your seat of the pants will tell you everything you need to know with that accelerator pump adjustment. Then you get, then you get to the hollies. So, this is a double pumper, it's got two sets of accelerator pumps, but for our purposes, we're only gonna talk about the front one here, because all of them are gonna have this basic setup. So what you've got is your reservoir, and inside the reservoir is a diaphragm, your linkage arm, only this one here doesn't have holes like the Edelbrock does. You've got this nut and bolt and spring arrangement. This is important, 
because your adjustment here is going to determine when, how quickly it gets a shot. Now here's, this is something I found many times. Guys will take the front of a carburetor apart, let's say to play with jets or to change the gasket or whatever. And when they put it back together again, they don't bother to check this adjustment. These bowls are not a precision fit. So when you put this on, it's possible to have a cocked a couple of thousandths of an inch one way or the other. If it's cocked this way, you're going to have a gap right here. And that gap will delay the movement of the arm when you touch the throttle. So anytime you screw around with the front bowl on a Holley carburetor, always go back and check this adjustment. And the adjustment is, I mean, it's self-explanatory. 3 8 wrench here, 3 8 wrench here. And you want to adjust it so that at rest, at idle, this part, this nut, or the bolt head, is just absolutely just barely resting on that pump arm. Uh, if you go, if it's any looser than that, you can see how much throttle you can move before it actually sees any motion. And that would, let's say you had a gap here of let's say 15, 20 thousandths of an inch, that little bit of motion on the, on the throttle blade would give you a stumble. So that adjustment right there, so that the bolt head is just absolutely barely touching but not pushing down on this arm that's the correct adjustment for that. There's another adjustment on these also. And this has to do with your idle RPM. Holly ships these carburetors with this screw in this hole. See, this one is marked number one. This one is marked number two. What that does is it slightly alters the position of the cam. There's a plastic cam. And you can see it right here. That operates this lever. It operates the, the, the pump arm. So there's a lot of misconception as to what this is for. When a Holly ships these carburetors, it's in the number one position. Number one position is for an engine that has a typical idle between, let's say, 750, 850 RPM in that range. If your combination idles 900, 1000 RPM, you want to switch it to the number two position. All you do is just take the screw out of here and put the screw in there. The two holes on the cam are not exactly lined up with these two holes. So when you move the screw from this hole to this hole, it, it delays the peak part of the ramp. So basically it tailors the, uh, the cam to that higher RPM. You're not wasting a lot of motion at the, at the, the, the smaller throttle openings. So that's what that's all about. And then, of course, if you want to go further, you're looking to change it out, pump squirters and all in it. But for the most part, if you're talking about a mild, average, typical street and strip car, you know, the 350 Chevy with a small cam and headers and, uh, let's say, uh, you know, just, just a regular intake manifold and a 750 Holley or thereabouts, the stock squirters are going to be just about the right size. Same for the Edelbrocks. If you're going beyond that, that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here because you can change the, the, the cams, you know, the, uh, you can change the cam, uh, you put a more aggressive one in, um, you can put a deeper reservoir in here, there's so many different places to go to, but that's more uh, along the lines of race car stuff instead of just like, you know, street and strip tuning, getting the thing to really snap when you, when you touch the gas. That's about it, um, but again, the basics. You have to make sure everything is sound before you start screwing around with accelerator pump adjustments and trying to get it to work just right. Everything else has to be in order, especially the ignition timing. You need the right amount, adequate initial lead, you know, idle to get that response that you're looking for. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.